Say I had these bad boys on, I take a picture, and then I use that image, and then you'd be able to take it to the next level. The concept of agentic AI. So agentic AI is autonomous decision-making uh, capability and is gaining traction in healthcare. How do you envision agentic AI transforming clinical workflows and the delivery of care, as well as the safeguards required? And if you can, maybe explain to us what agentic AI is. Yeah, wow, that's deep. I love it. Jump right in. <laughs> so the way I see this agentic AI going to help us in healthcare, think of it this way. I wish I could copy you, man. I wish I could clone you a hundred times and have a hundred doctors like you, but I can't. There's only one of you. If I could download your brain and create a digital image of you, how you think, how you do things, then I may have a patient that I'm seeing in the emergency room and it's three in the morning and you're asleep and I got to wait to call your partner that might be on call. But what if we created an agentic digital twin of you? And how would that help? Well, obviously, it'd be very warm and kind. That's number one. But number two, oh. it would have all this knowledge that you have. And the second part to this is you're going to be like, well, that sounds very robotic and very cold. Actually, like I started with, it'll have your warmth and it'll have your creativity. That digital twin would have all the ways you see, do things. And then now when I'm having this consult, my agentic twin, say I'm in the middle of intubating a patient, now my agentic twin could do the same with yours and start talking, going back and forth of here's the medical records, here are the things. And then now I can look at it and now I can see what you would be saying. Now, obviously, you, you're going to say, well, that could be some errors and hallucination. And, and you're right. And that's where you and I come in again. You would be able to look at it in the morning, look at the transcript and be like, oh, you know what? Let me... Let me tweak this a little bit. Let me call him and tell him X. And then me as a doctor, look at it and say, man, this one part, I don't know if this is true. Let me look at this up. And again, I can have an agent look it up, do all the deep research, come back with the actual articles, and then I can go back and verify if that's the case. And so that's an interesting way of doing things, but we're not far from that. Literally, you and I could do that today. It's just a matter of changing the workflows. Um, I think I answered all of it. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's extraordinary. So, you know, when we're talking about agents, we're talking about something that I assume gets learned and learns how to do it. So, for example, when I am teaching residents and, and fellows, I've always kind of, I just make them pull up the labs first. And I say, look, I don't want you to get distracted or tunnel vision with anything that had to do with opinion. Let's look at the labs and make a differential, even not even knowing, well, maybe knowing why they're here. And we go through each one and I talk about every indice and what the size of the red blood cell means and the albumin, maybe nutritionally versus inflammation. And I just say this over and over again to try and teach my residents fellows. To your point, that in itself could be a, a sole agent that isn't just what I think I have a pretty good expertise in on just just reading between the lines and lab work, but it can be an aggregate too, of not just a clone of an individual, but maybe like a bunch of minds. And what you're mm -hmm. saying is, Sanjay, this is the way we can scale elements of what we find a physician or a caretaker or uh, somebody employed in the healthcare system to find of high value and scale it, scale that individual. Yeah. And then uh, just to go a little geeky on you, I, I have my meta glasses. I have no stock in them. But say I had these bad boys on and I had the API configured to myself or you. And let's just say I created that bridge of that conversation. I could be seeing a patient and you could be sending me the information. I could be hearing it, processing it. And then you could be like, hey, Harvey, I'm up <laughs> two in the morning. I know it's kind of late. And I'm like, you know what? One second. Again, assuming this is HIPAA secured, I take a picture. I just took a picture of us, by the way. And then I use that image and upload it to you and be like, here's my patient. This is what it lo he's looking like or she. And then you'd be able to take it to the next level. So this is the next thing with agentic AI. That is absolutely wild. I, I mean, I have to believe that this this kind of thinking will make a lot of the bottlenecks, like even in the ER, for example, where, where you are, like just faster because like those wait times, I mean, you know, we're not going to talk about the costs and everything, but at least the wait times, the things, the dispositions, we'll have the doctor come talk to you. And that is so nebulous now. You don't know how long that's going to take, right? Mm -hmm. And they either have the plan or they need to get the history again. So how do you see that? And, and, and how far away is it that in a specific department or part of the healthcare system, we can actually see things happening faster due to agents. Yeah, you see, one of my favorite phrases, and I'll say this probably till I am dead, we don't know 
what we don't know. If I have a new colleague, resident, new oncologist, ER doctor, they may not know the culture. They may not know certain nuances. They may not know that this morning the new guidelines of X came out. Having an agent that is constantly navigating, searching, looking, that I can turn on my phone, put on my glasses and be like, do you want an update with the latest in in oncology or latest in emergency medicine specific to your zone? Wow. Now I can learn. Now I can create my own GPTs. Let's just say you and I are oncologists for fun uh, because I'm not an oncologist, but and we're both learning stuff. Now we could create our virtual agentic pool of knowledge. If you say, Harvey, these are the best journals. And I'm like, well, I think this is the best X, Y, Z. And now we create that among us. And now we share that data. And then we get somebody new to the practice. See, that to me is going to be help us in many ways. Now let's talk about, not in the politics, but let's talk about the price. I honestly think figuring out the best practices, just like uh, if you think about how we learned medical school, back in the day, if you really think about it, it was all mentorship. It was about finding an elder to bestow that knowledge on you. Now that knowledge, think of it as an agent. Now that knowledge can be dispersed. The second part, if you are doing something amazing in your institute, why not share that with the world? Case in point, if you discover some new way of doing X, and by the time you publish, get it out and push it out, it may take years. But if we have a way of, communicating quicker now i can be like huh let me try that out and let me see i'm and and you know what now that i think about it there's 12 other doctors around the world doing the same thing that 12 is very little but then now i can go back and be like you know what this is something let's let's push this out see and in my mind that would also help decrease the healthcare costs because now we're doing things more efficient and hopefully, you know, we all have that kinder spirit that we're wanting to give back to our patients. So now we're thinking, how can we improve healthcare? What can we do to take it to the next level? And, and I know I'm going on a sandbox there with Agentix, but I really think this is a huge key to our future. Yeah.